Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the finale of uh, DOE's National Science Bowl. And it is not raining this morning. Yay! Yay! You have had a soggy weekend, haven't you? It has been something else. Wow, after four long years, four long years, here we are back at the Listener Auditorium to do this in person. It's great. It is just great. This is a competition like no other. That's how we brand ourselves. It has been called by one coach, the best of the buzzer sports. I know you've been on the run for the last four days. It's a, been a whirlwind. You have been uh, out there at the beautiful Bolger Center. You've had some interesting meals inside a tent. I know you took a tour of the Capitol at night when it is at its most magical. You went down to the Smithsonian and uh, it has uh, all been on the government's dime. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. You know, for most of your life, you're gonna be working and paying taxes. Well, you're getting an early return now. The government is paying you to be here. Uh, and I hope over these past couple of days, you've, uh, you've made some friends. Friends that uh, will be with you, you'll run into them throughout your life. You're all here because of your scientific smarts and your teamwork, and I have read your press releases, and you are without question hometown heroes. From St. Croix to Shreveport to Honolulu, you are the toast of the town, and you should feel proud, proud in what you've done, and I know all the people watching today back home because we're live streaming this, are anxious to see how this turns out, no matter what happens, win or lose, you have all won already. You are also now part of the Science Bowl family, and we hope that this is not a one and done. I hope you'll come back many times again in the future, and uh, like a lot of our alums here, come back and volunteer with us, and help be part and support your family, the Science Bowl family. Some of you have been anticipating this for a long time. Olivia Jones of Vera O'Leary Middle School in Twin Falls, Idaho, she wrote that this is her dream vacation. She's always wanted to come to Washington, D.C. She says, I am super elated. Olivia, I hope this has lived up to all that you wanted it to be and more. This is also the first trip to the Nationals for Jerry Yuan and Samuel Zhu of Mission San Jose High School and for eighth grader Lydia Davis. First time here, big fan of robotics. She's from Los Alamos Middle School. Louis Gear of Basis San Antonio said, this is his fourth, and unfortunately he's very sad this is his last time, but he is glad it is in person, aren't we all? And Eric Zahn of Mountain View High School says, he is, get this, ambidextrous in only one hand. Think about that. I love that. He's here for his sixth time. And a special shout out to the coach at Saratoga High School out in California, Coach Knack, Kathy Nakamatsu. She has been involved in Science Bowl since 1998, and here it is 25 years later, first time made it to the Nationals. Coach, congratulations. <laughs> Whether it's your first time here, or like Mira Loma High School's coach extraordinaire, Jim Hill, this is his 24th time at the National Science Bowl. Jim, I hope you're out there. We are so happy you're back. Jim writes in his bio that he's thinking about retiring. He thinks he's gonna be dropping the mic, but maybe not quite yet. He'd like to come back for a 25th time. Jim, we hope you're back for your silver anniversary next year with us. Even for those of us who have lived here a long time, springtime along the mall and at the tidal basin when the cherry trees are in bloom, it brings a lump to the throat. And I hope you felt that being here in the nation's capital. You also get a lot of pollen in your nose and your eyes this time of year. You know, Washington can, as we all know, it can seem like a very cold place, even on occasion angry, and dangerous. But in this town once described as having northern efficiency and southern charm, or as John F. Kennedy said, he reversed that. 
There are a lot of good citizens here, good people, who will help you if you need help. All you have to do is get into a metro station and not know how to work the fare card machine and people are all over you, they wanna help. They don't always know exactly what to do, but they wanna help you out and make you feel at home. And I hope you've all felt welcome here and not the least bit anonymous. You know, I've been in seeing this bowl for the past 26 years. I started when I was 22. Yeah, we'll go with that. And through all that time, through all that time, the world has changed dramatically. But one thing has remained the same, perhaps best expressed by high school junior Grace Yawn. Grace, nice to have you here. Thank you for writing a nice bio. She's from Morgantown High School in West Virginia. She writes, I cannot wait to attend the National Science Bowl, to meet people from across the country, to bond over our shared love of science and math, and to eat Science Bowl's famous soft ice cream. I've not tasted it since the seventh grade. Finally, she's got to get her licks in. Grace is not alone in her addiction. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew Chen of Wyzetta High School writes that it's been so long since he's attended the bowl in person that he's forgotten the name of the ice cream machine, but it will live forever in his mind. Abheek Dewan of Ledoux Holton Watkins High School says, his goal here is not necessarily to bring home a trophy, no, no. He simply wants to be in the same room as the soft serve ice cream machine. <laughs> he dubs it the heavenly elixir, the food of the gods. Dairy Queen delirium, the new pandemic. Perhaps the, I love this, perhaps the biggest devotee of, ice, of the ice cream is aptly named Ben Fan, F-A-N, of University High School. Ben says that he's enjoying Science Bowl so much, get this, He's considering failing his econ requirement just so he can stay in high school and participate again next year for one last lick. <laughs> ben, you're sick. <laughs> We're gonna get this kid some professional help. As you all know, you are now part of a great tradition. This dates back to 1991, long before most of you were born. Back when words like memes and emojis and TikTok did not trip off the tongue. In the last 33 years, 33 years, over 33,000 middle and high school students have competed here in the nation's capital or online. Today you are making history. This is the largest group we have ever had at the National Science Bowl. <laughs> Almost 500 of you from 115 schools, 47 middle and 68 high schools. And among the 115 schools, there are 13 teams out there that either have twins or siblings or other relatives like coaches on the same team. One student, Lauren McGelkey, is playing for Preston Middle School in Colorado while her brother Colin is at Fossil Ridge High School across town. Some real sibling rivalry going on there. Grace Yang of Carmel High School says of her brother Jonathan that while she doesn't have her brother's athletic ability, people say that she's inherited the better half of her parents' gene pool. Mmm, <laughs> take that, Jonathan, yeah. This is very interesting. There is a gentleman here by the name of Jedediah Tomit from Jim Prep in Meridian, charter school in Idaho, who was a contestant here many years ago. He is an alum. His son is here today on that team, Zachariah, the first second generation uh, pair of contestants we've ever had here on the National Science Bowl. Zedadiah and Zachary. Over the years, we have been at venues all over the DMV, the district in Maryland and Virginia. We started out at the old Washington Convention Center back when Bill Nye was there, the science guy to entertain us. If Miller Middle School in San Jose is in the audience, uh, read their bios. Every one of them ended with, all hail Bill Nye. Sorry he can't be here today. After there, we went to the 4-H Center in Chevy Chase, home of the original ice cream machine the Department of Energy's Forestall headquarters on Independence Avenue. 
Then to the National Building Museum. Boy, I wish you could have seen that. It looks like the Parthenon right here in DC. And then we came here to this wonderful Lisner Auditorium. Almost every energy secretary since Admiral Watkins, way back at the beginning, has paid us a visit. Most notably, perhaps, Stephen Chu, President Obama's energy secretary, who is a Nobel laureate and the most mild-mannered of rock stars. He was great. We have had no Nobel laureates yet among our alumni, but I am convinced that one day the King of Sweden will be draping a medal around one of our NSB veterans' necks. It's gonna be a wonderful day. Could be one of you. Could be one of you sitting there right now, a future Nobel laureate. Speaking of luminaries, we cannot forget that First Lady Michelle Obama visited us a number of years ago. She moved us with her presence and her speech. And then she sat with Dean and Adam and Phelan and shared in asking questions. It was a goosebump, pinch yourself kind of moment. It was wonderful. You know, when I looked at the planning book to, to get all of you here to the right places over four days at the right times, and then to get you back home again, I swear Eisenhower must have had an easier time organizing the D-Day invasion. My goodness, it is this thick. All of the volunteers, everybody knew exactly where they needed to be. They were working so hard, and for most of them, for most of them, this is more passion than job. They've been working to give you as flawless and as memorable a time as possible. And you know, no one works harder, no one sweats out the details more, no one agonizes more than your lovely surrogate mom the past four days, Jan Tyler. <laughs> Jan, of course, doesn't work alone. She has two wonderful assistants and uh, Kelly Day and Alan Wash. Would you guys stand up as well so we can recognize you? <laughs> Always smiling, indefatigable, unfailingly hospitable. Boy, aren't you lucky that you have people like that here who are worrying about you the entire time. I'm here because of Jan. Uh, she made me promise that I couldn't retire until she retired. Well, Jan, I am completely replaceable. You are not, and I hope you stay for a long, long time. You know, this afternoon when the wheels of your plane are up and this whirlwind has ended and you're thinking back what happened over the past four days, I hope you please take a moment to acknowledge folks like Jan and Kelly and Alan and all the people that have made this possible. Uh, text them post something on social media, or even <laughs> write them a snail mail note, put a stamp on it, and send it to them. And I will assure you that your thoughtfulness will be long remembered. They will treasure that. Speaking of thanks, I'd like to recognize Bodie Larson and the entire team from Kelly Walsh High School in Casper, Wyoming. If you're here, could you clap so we can hear where you are? They're over there. The reason I'm calling them out, because if you read their biographies, and it's wonderful reading, you'll note that everyone on that team thanked each and every one of their teachers and teachers and coaches, all six of them, for all the support and the encouragement they gave. Uh, guys, you are a class act, and I hope you make a copy of that and share it with all those teachers. They will, they will treasure that. And Hanley Ensdorf from Boston Latin School. Boston Latin School is here for the very first time ever. We're happy to have you here. Uh, Hanley wrote that uh, without his parents' motivation, he simply wouldn't be here today. And I know a lot of you share that sentiment. You're a good son, Hanley. Uh, among the coaches that are here today, or we should mention, North Hollywood's coach and Len Soloff, Took ill, he wasn't able to make the trip today, but he has been coming here for 25 years and is celebrating 50 years as a teacher this year. I'm sorry he's not, and if you're listening at home there, Len, uh, we're missing you. He says he has no plans to retire anytime soon. We love that. Bob Julius, the first year coach at Stevens High School in South Dakota, is no stranger to National Science Bowl since he was here himself as a contestant when he was a middle schooler. Coach Mark Moody, Mark is here from Buckholtz High School. Buckholtz, where are you guys sitting today? All right. 
Mark graduated from the same school where he teaches, Buckholz. He married a Buckholz grad. And I just have to say, what a great compliment it is to those schools that you had such a great education that you wanted to come back to pay it forward. I think that's just tremendous. And what good news it was to read that some selfless bone, bone, darrow, mo, bone marrow donor, excuse me, and dozens of blood donors and community supporters helped Bismarck High School coach Randy Krogsteg to be able to say he is now a leukemia survivor. Coach, we're very happy about that. Continue good health. One of my favorite parts of the bowl is, is to read those bios. They are invariably funny, quirky, heart-tugging, occasionally self-effacing, but usually preposterously unbelievable, all expressed in 160 words or less. One of you out there is among the undead, Daniel King from Vera O'Leary Middle School in Idaho, claims to be a zombie. Yeah. He got a graft from a cadaver's bone that was placed in his jaw during some dental surgery. So Dan is not interested in the ice cream. If you're sitting near Dan, watch out. There are a lot of brains here this morning. Dan is salivating. Then there's Samantha Huller from Matsu Career and Technical High School in Wasilla, Alaska. And oh, she's normal, like a normal kid. She enjoys reading and walking her dog so long as she keeps an eye out for polar bears. Rough neighborhood. And one person you might not want to hang out with is another Dan, Coach Dan Williams from Marshall Middle School just outside Pittsburgh. Dan says he's been struck by lightning and bitten by a lion. Dan, you're bad luck. You're bad luck, I don't know. Really rough neighborhood. Two of you, Colleagues Michael Chen of Colliersville High School in Tennessee and Shreyas Ekanathan of Lexington High School. Lexington is sitting right over there. They have the oddest of habits. They not only like rocks, they lick them. <laughs> Sedimentary, metamorphic, igneous, makes no difference. They're licking those rocks. Probably better than licking toads, you know? But so I suspect there might be something in those rocks because Shreyas says, joys Boston sports, like watching Celtic football and Patriots basketball. That's, that's from licking all those rocks. <laughs> Another of the dirt people, Alex Franks, likes rocks, doesn't lick them, but thinks they're really birds. Remember that thing a few months ago that birds aren't real, that they were robots, that they were spying on us? Alex Franks is kind of part of that group. Janet Fu of Fayetteville High School tells us she is so cool. She is the coolest kid on campus. So cool, she's actually endothermic. <laughs> and it's not just you students. How about Coach David Knight of University High School? I, I don't know about this guy. Apparently keeps his students humble by sabotaging their Petri dishes. Huh? and then single-handedly competes against his team, dominating in categories like landscape, architecture, and enology. Hey, it's wine country out there, I get it. After reading that many of you think you are goats, the greatest of all time, like Sharish Parija of Dallas High School, who says, you can assume I have won all the gold medals in all of the events that I have ever participated in. And if you get a biology question in the finals, forget it. I know the answer, don't even ring in. Nick Dang of Buckholz out egos them all by claiming he won an EGOT, an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. All because he participated in a number of acronymic competitions that involved no acting or singing at all. Come on, Nick, come on. The shortest bio of them all Keming Meng of Fayetteville High School, three words, science is okay. <laughs> Reminds me of the Animal House movie, Faber University, whose motto is, knowledge is good. <laughs> Justin Liu, boy, Justin, you have some good friends. He didn't need AI to generate his bio since his loving teammates got together and wrote it for him. 
Wow, you got some great friends. Doesn't cost anything to believe it. Sounds good to me. And then lastly, there are the swaggering types, like Rohit Hari of Enloe High School, who writes that he is a marvelous two meter tall specimen. <laughs> yeah. Viraj Nagandi of Dulles High School tells us he is a very smart potato with a brain like Einstein's. Very humble, safe, self-effacing man, him. Cedar Falls High School student Anurag Anugu, who is headed to Duke to play basketball, claims he can hit a tennis ball 180 miles per hour, can bench press 315 pounds, can't figure out why neutrinos derive their mass or why women do not approach him. Anurag, I'm very sorry you weren't here before. For three years, we had a student from Lexington High School by the name of Brandon Lee, who was the self-proclaimed and acknowledged titan of testosterone. He could have given you some ideas. Before we start the competition, just a few accolades to a couple of competitors who stood out. Vera Shang of Ray High School in Corpus Christi and violinist Alec Johnson of Billings Central Catholic High School, both of them so musically talented, they have already performed at Carnegie Hall. Just amazing. Congratulations to you. Oh, you can give them a round of applause. And talk about paying it forward. Some of you, you're not just concerned about yourselves, you're already thinking about your successors. Uh, Olathe High School in Kansas and Sheikha Kapoor, she loves game shows. Her great goal was to be on Family Feud one day. But she has co-founded a program called Lab Rats that aims to inspire interest in science among middle school, school students. What a wonderful idea. And we welcome back today Ananya Vinay of Clovis North High School in Fresno, who not only won, back in 2017, the Scripps National Spelling Bee with the word Marocain, M-A-R-O-C-A-I-N, but she has paid it forward by founding Spell Genius, an organization that mentors aspiring spellers. And then there's Jaden Fernandez, who hopes to be a clinical psychologist and eventually open a mental health clinic in St. Croix, a town that has given him so much. Way to go, young man. Lastly, let me satisfy a request. One of the middle school coaches here today is not here for the ice cream. He makes his own at home, thank you very much, and it's very good. But rather, he writes in his bio and he quotes, while this is my ninth time coaching a team at the National Science Bowl, it would make it all that much more exciting if David Zarin called out one of my students while emceeing the finals on May 1st, 2023. Hats off to you, Mr. Zarin. Coach David Schuth, coach, if you're here, flattery will get you everywhere. Would Coach Schuth of Sycamore Middle School from Indianapolis please stand up with Derek, Sonali, Samir, Nathan, and Cheyenne. Let's give him a nice round of applause. So guys, take a lesson from the master. Ask nicely and you will often receive. All Godspeed to everyone. Thank you for your attention this morning. You've been a great audience. I'm sure you're, you're uh, trying to wake up here and I hope I helped that along. I wish you luck and we're gonna get on with the competition here. Uh, for the past 23 years, the National Science Bowl alumni have been invited to come to the national event to participate as volunteers. You see them all around here. They assist, assist in a variety of tasks, competition officials, role models. They're, today there are 25 alumni in attendance one of them will be not moderating this morning, another is a judge, and other scorekeepers and rules judges throughout the room. I'd like now to recognize all the National Science Bowl alumni and ask them to please stand so we can give them thanks. Aren't they great? They are just tremendous. Now onto the competition. We started with 47 middle schools and 68 high schools, as I said earlier. We're down to the final two middle school teams. Basis Independent Bellevue from Bellevue, Washington. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> a 
They are undefeated in double elimination and they will play against Jonas Clark Middle School right here. From Lexington, Massachusetts. One loss in double em elimination. In the high school competition, we have, in the white shirts over there, Lexington High School from Lexington, Massachusetts. <laughs> Undefeated in double elimination. And University High School from Irvine, California. <laughs> with one double loss in double elimination. Let's wish all the teams the best of luck, and I will now Turn over the microphone to our two moderators, Phelan McGowan and Adam Matthews. Gentlemen, take it away.